Okay, so in three, two. Good evening. Uh, my name is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. We are here to present to you today our preliminary design for Delaney High School. As you'll recall, as part of the Capital Improvement Program, board approved the design of a replacement to Delaney High School. Uh, the replacement will take several years. The construction funds have not yet been approved, but the design is in the early stages. We have worked closely with the BCPS administration, and I want to acknowledge the support we have received from Ms. Sandra Reed, who's the acting executive director, and Sam Win Wincoop, who's the principal of Delaney High School. Also, I'd like to acknowledge team members from our team uh, under the leadership of Merrill Plate. Uh, I'm not sure if he's here. Uh, we have Mike Archbold, who is our manager of planning, and he's supported by his staff at architect Desri Loud. Uh, that have been part of the design development and the company that we have hired by uh, for, for the design uh, is Mosley Architect and we have Mr. Bill Brown who is the principal I believe of Mosley Architect so I'm just requesting that you save your questions till the end the purpose of this presentation is to share what we are doing and no approvals are required and we'll answer your questions at the end. So with that, Mr. Brown, I'm going to uh, pass on the screen to you. Thanks, Mr. Dixit. Dixit uh, uh, Vice President with. I am a Vice President with Mosley Architects and uh, the Managing pr Principal and working on the uh, project uh, with your staff. Um, some general information about the project uh, in terms of the agenda we're going to talk about. Uh, project goals, value engineering measures, project location, uh, site conditions, the building organization, uh, and we're going to share some renderings and 3D animations, uh, talk a little bit about where we are in the project schedule, and then we'll entertain your questions. Um, Delaney High School is located uh, north of Towson, just south of Cockeysville, and if we take a look at the vicinity in the vicinity of that area, uh, we find that there are 10 elementary schools, three middle schools and two high schools in that area. Um, some general information is as we designed the building uh, and, and conceived it, we were uh, sort of going by the idea that instruction drives facilities and it's a student centered building. Um, a, a new building developed on an occupied site and as we developed it, we did multiple charrettes to develop uh, the ed spec uh, vision for the high school and the design. Um, the enrollment is targeted at a state rated capacity of 2019 with a core capacity, which is the larger spaces like the gymnasium, the learning commons, the dining and student commons uh, to 2200 students. Uh, regional programs include a functional academic learning support um, and communication learning support. We're, the design supports 21st century next generation learning techniques by uh, creating collaborative spaces uh, within academic areas. We also include a central uh, centralized multifunctional learning commons, outdoor classroom spaces and flexible learning spaces throughout the building. Uh, there's a robust CTE program at Delaney that includes, uh, among, among others, the HVAC careers, the food and beverage management, uh, computer science and homeland security, business and some others. Our sustainable design strategies are uh, aimed at uh, targeting a green globe certification for two green globes by maximizing energy efficiency and looking at the building envelope uh, and solar ready roof. Uh, security provisions are guided by the concepts of crime prevention through environmental design that include uh, a secure vestibule at the main entry, limiting access during the day, um, admin and faculty spaces that are located to allow for passive supervision and public spaces that can be isolated for after hours use and a, a simple floor plan that's easily supervised by staff and also the use of security cameras. 
Our site goals included separating the buses, cars, and pedestrians, which at the current site are somewhat uh, uh, intermixed or, uh, when they uh, have arrival and dismissal. Uh, but also we want to uh, provide a close access to the stadium from parking for safety and uh, observation from staff. Architecturally, uh, we're work we work to improve the building efficiency, uh, simplifying the building footprint, standardizing spaces and, and windows and door openings. Some unique design features include a compact footprint and an arrangement that maximizes daylighting and views. Um, building configuration that provides uh, flexibility through standardized classrooms and multiple learning areas throughout. Uh, we maximize the site for learning and athletics, and we configured the gymnasium and auxiliary gym to accommodate larger events. Uh, we've master planned a future addition, as I mentioned, taking the, the target uh, state rated capacity to the, the uh, core capacity in sometime in the future. Um, we've included outdoor learning spaces, and we've We've really worked hard to celebrate the school's history, culture, and the rock. And if you know Delaney, um, they really have a, 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 a long-standing appreciation for this outcropping of rock. And each year, the seniors paint the rock and uh, put their names on it. And it's part of their mission statement um, that they they say Delaney is built upon the rock. Um, our community engagement activities started in April of this year. We had our first community meeting in May. We had a, a school champions meeting in, sep in September, and we're here this afternoon uh, for the Board of Ed uh, presentation. We're anticipating our next uh, community meeting on January 11th, and also are also uh, planning another uh, school's champion meeting as we advance the design. In our first community meeting, we uh, went out early on in the design process. We had just uh, developed a couple of conceptual uh, con conceptual plans that looked at site usage and we walked the, the assembled community at the meeting through the pros and cons of each, um, did a presentation to the whole group and then we invited them to come down, um, have one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations. We had four stations that included uh, the BCPS staff, uh, the design team staff, and we we recorded all of the input that they gave us and that informed us as we started to look at these different concepts and how to go forward with the design. So it really in, informed that, uh, uh, that activity. So getting to the project site, the project is a 42.76 acre site. It's bounded by East Pedonia Road, Girdwood Road, and Treyhearn Road. The existing Delaney School sits really tight to uh, the uh, East Pedonia. Uh, the, the parking is all up front. Uh, you can see that the distance to the stadium, it, which is a, a bit of a walk up the hill, uh, is further away from the parking. Um, and the rock is currently behind the school. Uh, we've we've uh, sort of ghosted in the location that we're proposing to put the new school. And by putting it in this location, this allows us to phase the project and keep safety in mind as we uh, safety and constructability in mind as we go forward. So this is the, the new layout of the site. Uh, we've looked and identified where all the existing crosswalks are. We've looked at pedestrian pathways uh, through the, the neighborhood. Um, this is the main entry into the building, and it's aligned with the student bus loop entry that you can see now we've got the buses and, and cars uh, really separated on site. There's the rock to sort of a, Give you an idea of where that uh, is located. The stadium, track, and field, along with the gym and auxiliary uh, or auditorium, are aligned along an organizing uh, axis. Uh, we have a softball and practice field, 60 foot uh, softball field competition, 90 foot uh, ball diamond, and a practice field. We also have ten uh, tennis courts and a basketball court. Looking at uh, more close up at pedestrian pathways, just to uh, identify the front entry, we have a one way drop off loop that is uh, rings the parking area, and that allows us to have a good stacking of uh, the um, cars as for drop off. But pedestrian pathways would then converge into the site. Um, there are three pathways that take you to the front entry um, and also 
a close proximity of getting to the stadium entry. For the, uh, the vehicular uh, drop off uh, stacking is along um, East Pedonia and then we enter into the site. So we're pulling all the cars off of East Pedonia, uh, much more space than they have now. Uh, and then students or whoever's being dropped off can take these pathways and sidewalks to the front entry. And then cars exit out and make a right hand turn. So we keep all of the uh, uh, car traffic on East Pedonia going in one direction. For the uh, bus loop, we have an uh, ingress on Girdwood Road and an egress on Treyhearn Road. There's staff parking that has a um, access off of Treyhearn and staff building entry right there adjacent to that staff dedicated parking. Uh, the student bus uh, loop entry. There's also uh, what, what uh, is identified as an outdoor HVAC CTE work yard there. Uh, basketball court and tennis courts. So buses will come up uh, Girdwood and then uh, through a one way, uh, they'll come into the site, drop off for pickup, and then egress would be out Treyhearn. Majority of the buses will go down Treyhearn and make the left onto Girdwood. Some may turn uh, on Treyhearn, but the majority will go down Girdwood, which was preferred by BCPS uh, transportation because it uh, allowed a lot more stacking at the intersection at Girdwood and East Bedonia. Pedestrians then uh, also will have sidewalks that will get them to the uh, student entry. As we come in and look a little bit closer, we also want to identify the outdoor uh, dining area that's adjacent to the student commons dining space. Uh, they'll also have a, uh, a couple of outdoor learning areas. We have a greenhouse that's accessible uh, to the all students. It's detached from the building. And we also have the service area that has uh, secondary parking, uh, some grounds uh, spaces and loading for um, the, the building. Loading is uh, scheduled through the, um, the drop off loop uh, when it's appropriate. Uh, and then the exiting is out the same way as the cars would and make a right back on to East Bedonian. So getting into the building uh, organization, it's organized around two uh, axes that uh, give us the um, sort of the overarching sort of uh, structure of the building. Uh, we've also uh, separated out the way that we can uh, separate public and active spaces from the academic and quiet three-story um, uh, wing. In the front, we've got the main entry, the secure vestibule that brings you in an admin and guidance. And the other side is the uh, student bus entry. And we've located at each of the high traffic corners an AP and SRO office. Uh, performing arts includes the auditorium, the dance studio, drama, black box, and some other uh, music uh, labs. Uh, Rex and Park has a separate entry. Um, an office, a serving space, and a community use. And we've uh, de uh, determined ways that we can lock off the rest of the building as uh, Rec and Park will use those spaces along with the gymnasium. Physical education uh, includes the gymnasium and aux auxiliary gym on the uh, first floor level. And you'll see the second uh, plan uh, to the right of that. Uh, the lower level plan has the locker rooms and team rooms, and that's tucked right underneath the uh, the gymnasium, and that helps us take uh, into consideration some of the topography of the site. Food services includes a kitchen, dining, and uh, student commons. There's a learning stair, which will make a connection between the student commons and the academic wing. Uh, we have CT spaces, HVAC uh, career food science, and on the right hand side, we've got the pre-engineering uh, with labs and project rooms. On the three floors, we've also stacked uh, four science classrooms for uh, utility connections to go through the building. Um, there's a collaboration space. Uh, and also I, I mentioned the greenhouse. On this level, there's also visual arts that can also use the outdoor uh, learning spaces. On the second floor is the learning commons. It's located over the admin and guidance with collections and stacks, Cyber Cafe, uh, group instruction and support spaces. Again, I'm just pointing out the learning stair that connects the 
student commons to the uh, academic wing. There's additional CTE on this level that would have computer science, additional pre-engineering labs, um, also Homeland Security and business labs. You'll see then that we've also got at a high traffic uh, corner an AP and SRO office. We've uh, distributed collaboration, open collaboration areas through the academic wing. Uh, the typical classrooms, um, uh, the science uh, classrooms, project and prep rooms. And then on the third floor, we have the AP and SRO office. classrooms, science, and the regional special ed uh, spaces, along with the uh, special ed space, and digital arts and uh, graphic arts. So the unique design features include the, uh, the gymnasium and uh, auxiliary gym have been configured to accommodate larger uh, events with the use of telescoping uh, bleachers and operable partitions between the gymnasium and the auxiliary gym. This allows you to have larger uh, events at the uh, high school and have a seating capacity of approximately 3,200. The auditorium seating uh, has a capacity of 1,000. And then the student commons is uh, got the, the, uh, the learning stair connecting to the uh, academic wing, which can be used for presentation or town hall type spaces or uh, functions. There's six serving lines. The dining is sized for a third of the student capacity, and there's that connection to the indoor-outdoor with the outdoor uh, dining and, and uh, outdoor learning. We've configured the uh, spaces here so that they are positioned to serve as a pre-function space for auditorium and gymnasium functions, and we've uh, determined some ways that we can close off either if the gymnasium is the only thing operating or the auditorium, or if there's a large event, you can open up uh, more of those spaces. Um, we've uh, laid out a future uh, addition to bring the building up to the core capacity. And I'll just share a couple of uh, images. There's the front door that sort of gives you the context of the building within the uh, larger community. There's the rock, and you can see that we've uh, separated buses and um, vehicles really uh, well. So the building symmetry really reinforces the wayfinding of where the front entry is. Uh, here you can see the uh, service ent entry side, the uh, stadium, which is aligned with the uh, 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 the uh, auxiliary gym and the uh, uh, team rooms below. A view of the outdoor learning and dining spaces. The bus loop side. And the front entry. So with that, I'd also like to share uh, a bit of a animation. Um, so from this bird's eye uh, view, it really reveals the design within the context of the larger community. So buses and cars are now truly separated with cars only on East Pedonia and buses on Girdwood and Treyhern uh, to provide as safe as a site as possible with considerations for uh, pedestrian movement. The site really leverages um, every opportunity for academics and physical education. Uh, the separate drop-off loop prevents uh, mixing of uh, students with, uh, or mixing of the drop-off with the student and visitor parking. The symmetry of the front building really reinforces that wayfinding. Uh, so easy understanding of how the uh, how to enter the site and where you should be going. Um, the proximity of the parking to the stadium provides a real safe path that can be monitored um, with good sight lines. And see, we've really enhanced a little bit of space for that history of the rock and the culture of the, the site. And you can see the team running out to the uh, uh, field on, on game day there. It's another view of the outdoor learning spaces, um, the greenhouse. Uh, this is from the uh, staff parking area. And so they'll have a uh, entry that they can have access to into the academic wing and on the bus loop side that you know for loading and unloading so as the students come in they'll see the the uh, uh, the building and we've got the HVAC uh, uh, career uh, court over there and then as they enter the building uh, there's a, a, a 
an AP and SRO office uh, for um, passive surveillance. Again, the the outdoor spaces and some shade uh, so that you can use that for any number of different types of uh, activities. We have a home uh, home bleachers and visitor bleachers, a, a comfort station. Um, and then uh, as you enter the site at the drop off, you have a, a good view of the rock and we place the, the flags there, uh, made a little plaza seating area there so the school can have events uh, for uh, team day or, or whatever. Um, and you'll really know the uh, you've the you've arrived at the uh, new um, Delaney High School replacement. And with that, we'd be glad to uh, take your answers. And I, I thank you for the opportunity, and we're really proud of the work that we've all done together. And uh, look forward to seeing this built. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Pete, I have two questions. Sure. OK. I'm Rod McMillian. I have two questions that community members have sent to me. Uh, will the site, can everybody hear me? We're moving around a lot on that screen. OK. Yeah. Will the site be planned so an outside music group can still use the band room? There's a long history between the outside group and the school. So, Bill, you want That's to answer that That's a real specific question? question at this point in time. Uh, an out, uh, out? Outside music group. Sort of like the band for the marching band or? It's an outside group that uses the band room. Oh, outside. Okay, that's really a, a use question that I guess would be for the staff. Uh, I mean, I, I guess there are community spaces in there I might defer to. Uh, so Mike let me let me try to. Answer. If the question is, can they use the space? The answer is yes, as long as they have an approved user facilities. Okay, great. So that solves that question. The second question, Mr. Pete, you mentioned that that you haven't secured all the funding when you first started. You haven't secured the funding exactly right now, correct? That's that's correct, Bob. Okay. We continue to include it in our capital request. OK, so so what are you where are you trying to get that money? Where is it coming from? What are you trying to secure? So all of the money for schools is partially coming from state and the other part is coming from county. So we have received funds for the design, which is county funds, and we are trying to get funding for construction from county and state both. OK, so if the state doesn't give us what's required for the new building, then the county's going to come through with it. Well, th that's that's a question that we don't have the answer to the our request to county and state both. Include their share of funds. We continue to be optimistic that we'll receive funds. The question is when because there are a lot of other projects in queue. OK, now did, did Dr. Shesky commit the county to make up the funds that the state don't come through? Well, the funding has to come from both sources. That's all I can share. Okay. The funding has to come from both sources. OK, and thank, that you is, very, yeah, thank you very much. Mr. McMillian, if I could just add part of part of the, the funding is dependent on what the, the SRC is determined by the state. And once we receive what the actual funding amounts are going to be, we can nail this down a little bit better when you deal in in school sizes that are this large um, and the projects extend over over several years like this replacement project will like we're currently dealing with with lands down part of that landscape may change. So that's where the that's where the direct uh, answer can't come to your to your questions, but we have included um, the funding requests in both the county and the state requests. If that answers your question, we are seeking funds from both and both partners have committed to work with us. We just don't know exactly what allotment we're getting from from the county and from the state yet. Thank you very much.
so if there are no other questions, um, uh, we'll adjourn this presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Mr. McMillian, in between um, this presentation and the uh, buildings and contracts meeting, um, we don't have the technical ability to pause the live stream, so we will just leave this uh, run. Uh, my recommendation is that everyone mute their mics until um, the uh, five o'clock hour hits, and then we verify that you've got a uh, quorum, sir, and then we could start the meeting from there, okay? And I will sign off. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
Mr. McMillian, it is five o'clock, but I only see yourself and Mr. Young. There is a phone number that I um I I uh, can't identify. Um, that may be another board member, but I'm not sure. Now, Mr. Young is the vice chair, so he's he might be running the meeting. I don't know. Emery, can you hear us? Ms. Harvey is the chair, Mr. Young is the vice chair, Ms. Hen and I are two other members. I see Mr. Young. Mr. Corn. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, Ms. Shea. I'm on the phone. That might be my number that you're seeing. It, it is. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Mr. Young, are you able to hear us? I can't hear Emery, but it sounds like he can hear us. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, Mr. Young, find the uh, more icon on your teams. Choose settings. Then device settings. And um, underneath of the um, the microphone, um, make sure that there is one selected there, sir. Okay. Um, was it the um, the uh, microphone array internal microphone that was selected? Okay. Mr. Young, underneath of audio devices up at the very top, there is um, a drop down that may say something like custom settings currently or something else. Um, make sure that that says all of the uh, internal, um, all of the in, uh, internal microphone and speakers are selected. Emery texted me, Mr. Corns, it's on a custom setup. Okay. Um, all right. Um, one second. Um, Mr. Young, are you you're not plugged into a port replicator or a dock of any sort? If you are, can you unplug the laptop from all of that and just Ms. Hennem, Mr. McMillian, I don't know um, 
I don't know what Mr. Young, uh, how to help Mr. Young with this one. Um, um, you want his um, number to speak to him directly? Uh, I believe I, I just got it, Mr. McMillian. Uh, Mr. Young, in, in reference to your message, yes. Well, uh, let's do a let's do a restart with the machine unplugged and uh, see if it comes back and lets your teams work a little better, OK? So, Ms. Hannon, Mr. McMillian, uh, currently there are only the two of you, so we'll need to wait until Mr. Young can join back um, and be um, uh, interactive uh, before we can start. So I'm going to go back on mute until he joins. Understood. Okay, and if, if, you, he can't, if he can't speak, if somebody sends me the script, I'll, I'll do it. I just sent this. Uh, I'm sending the uh, okay, script Ms. now to you and Mr. McMillian. Jim. I think uh, Mr. Young, did, uh, did uh, we get you back? But you still can't speak. Um, um, Mr. Young, do you have um, on your on your phone? Let's let's try this, OK? Um, on. Um, the um, underneath of more and meeting info, there is a a number um, that is listed with a conference ID, and you can uh, stay in this meeting, uh, sir, and then join with your phone, um, and it will give you the audio through the phone and then the video through the the video and the video feed through the, the computer. If you'd like to try that. Okay, so Mr. Young, um, star six mutes and unmutes to talk. It currently shows you as muted. So if you on your keypad, try star six and see if we can hear you. Hello. I believe I heard you, sir. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, I can. I can. Um, okay. And, and Mr. Young, um, you you um, you may be getting double uh, audio. If you um, turn the audio down on your computer, it will stop that double sound. Okay. I turned the speaker off, so that should take care of that. Perfect. Okay. So, um, Mr. Young, I believe you have three board members on. As I'm looking down through, I um, I believe this is a committee of five, so that should give you quorum. We are a committee of four, so let me find. Oh, apologies. Script now, that's okay. All right. Um, yep. And so, uh, we sir, are, we are uh, the live stream has already been started because of the previous meeting, so you can just begin your script whenever you're ready. Okay. Yep. I was going to say we're, we're about to start now. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, December fourth, two thousand twenty-three. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items in this all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Four committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Thea or myself 
is you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Mr. Young? Present. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. McGillian? Present. There are three members present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Mr. Augusto? Present. Dr. DiDonato? Present. Dr. Grimm? Present. Chris Hartlove? Here. Dr. Jones? Ms. Valley Holden? Present. Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Dr. Kimberly Ferguson? Present. Ms. Megan Shea? Present. Ms. Patricia Mustafer? Present. Mr. Merrill Plate? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. Ms. Amanda Lanza? Present. Ms. Jennifer Drury? Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Desiree Loud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Mr. Hartlove, please state your name for the record and proceed. Sure. Uh Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Hartlove. I'm Chief Financial Officer for BCPS. The first uh, contract for this evening is JMI-601-07 Library Management System. Uh, this is an extension of the contract term. Um, this modification extends the contract for five years with an additional option to extend it for five more years, the contract spending authority will cover the current five year term plus the five year extension period and the increase uh, requested is um, $2 million. And um, if you have any questions, we have staff here that can answer that. Are there any questions from committee members? I just wanted to provide a clarification and edit on the uh, contract description. This did not go through curriculum committee as it's not a curricular um, item. It is a tool that's used to uh, monitor and roster uh, resources within the library system, as well as other digital tools within BCPS like um, Chromebooks, projectors, those kinds of things, um, so it did not actually go through curriculum committee. So that's just an edit to the first line on the document. Thank you for that clarification, Dr. DiDonato. If there are no uh, committee member questions, Mr. Hartlove, if you can proceed with contract two. Excuse me, Mr. Young, I do have one, and I thank Dr. DiDonato for that clarification. Go May ahead, I proceed? Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, Dr. DiDonato, are all school assets currently cataloged in the system? Library? So, um, this actually is something that we're working collaboratively with um, the Department of Instructional Technology. Um, currently, there are some digital tools that are, are rostered through there. So student and um, staff computers are. Um, I understand that port replicators are. Um, I'll probably turn over to Mr. Augusto to give you the rest of the details of what um, is uh, being inventoried within there. Um, my part is the library books and library resources. So Mr. Augusto, if you want to share the other um, items that are rostered in there. Yeah, so uh, we do capture in the destiny system, as Dr. D. Donato mentioned, um, <clears throat> we do have an inventory of Chromebooks. Um, we do have um, inventory. We don't inventory the peripherals, um, so like the dongles, um, any of the um, other pieces. Um, in terms of, and I'll, I'll ask 
Mr. Corns for clarification, do we track monitors as well? Do we inventory monitors? Or is that a ancillary? No, no, sir. Those are that that's a, a de minimis peripheral. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, we track um, most of the items well, outside of the as the, uh, Mr. Corns mentioned de minimis um, items. I, and so again, I don't know if your question was related to IT equipment um, assets or um, library materials. Thank you, Mr. Gusto. Um, it was actually the library materials, but I appreciate that information. Uh, always helpful. So I appreciate I that. Um, I remember I recall visiting um, one of the schools in my district and seeing this firsthand and being so impressed by the system itself for um, student use, um, librarian use, and I got the impression that we were rolling it out at that point. This was some time ago. So my question um, probably for Dr. DiDonato is, is this fully rolled out system wide and do we have all library assets um, logged? Yes. Oh, it, yes. This has been um, an existing product for some time. Um, so yes, all library assets are inventoried within there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hartlove, if you would proceed, proceed with contract two. Sure. Uh, JBO-723-23 Behavioral Health and Physical Health Services. Um, this is a new contract. Um, the, uh, this contract will provide behavioral health counseling and physical health services to address health, mental health, and substance use disorders for students in schools. The uh, uh, maximum contract spending authority is set at uh, $500,000, and the contract is a five-year term ending on um, December 31st, 2028. And um, we have staff. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ferguson is here to answer any questions if you have them. Are there any committee member questions? OK, Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with contract three. Sure, uh, CWA-102-24 graduation regalia. This is another new contract. It's a five year contract also that expires on December 31st, 2028. Uh, this uh, contract provides caps, gowns, hoods, and tassels to students and faculty. Student regalia is purchased by individual students. Um, the average cost for uh, student cap and gown is $15. The maximum contract spending authority is $100,000. And again, Dr. Ferguson is here if you have any questions. Are there any questions? Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with contract four. Yes, CWA-108-24 print goods and services. Uh, this is simply a, an assignment uh, change in vendor name. So there's no, uh, there's no um, impact to the um, to the uh, uh, fiscal impact to this um, to this uh, uh, contract. Are there any questions? Just one, Mr. Young. Um, what was the prior name? I see that the award vendor is to Xerox. Um, Ms. Webster, I don't know if you have that uh, information. I'm checking. I put you on the spot there, hopefully. <laughs> and and I can you can get that to me later. I was wondering if this was an acquisition um, of sorts or the. I will, the have to follow up on, I will have to follow up on that. Um, this is Jennifer. I'm the supervisor for copy and print services. Um, actually, we already had a contract with Xerox. But the contract that we were using was the state of Maryland contract and that had expired. So we are now ex now asking for it to use like to piggyback on another contract. If that okay. makes any sense. No, it, it makes perfect sense. Um, under Amina partners 
UC, University of California? Yes, I think that's the, the new contract that we're asking to piggyback on. Okay, do you happen to know if um, the state renewed their contract? It seems odd that they would let that expire without another um, I don't, vehicle being in place. I'm not sure about that. I don't think they did. I think that's why we picked that. We work with our Xerox rep and purchasing and they um, selected that contract that we would use. Okay, versus a Maryland one or Meek or someone that we use typically in in state. Miss Hen, this is Melanie Webster. The state of Hi. Maryland is is working on re on redoing this solicitation, but they did not have it ready prior to the expiration date. Okay, so I imagine many others are in the same position we were with having to find another I vehicle for this. Would expect that's true. Okay. Well, thank you for the work in, in getting it done and ensuring continuity of services. I appreciate all your work no, on this. Thank no you. Problem. Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with our next contract. Sure. Uh, our next contract is NGO 406 24 Telecommunications Master Service Agreement. Um, this is a new contract for four years that expires August 18th, 2027. Um, this, uh, the maximum spending authority on the contract is $1,388,040. This contract will provide for the voice over internet protocol of VoIP that is used by all schools and offices for routine and emergency communications with the community, family of students and uh, interoffice operations. This covers all of the 443809 numbers and all of the 667251 phone exchanges for BCPS. Are there any questions? Mr. Young, I have one. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hartlow, I think you said, but I, I missed it. This is with a, a new provider. Yeah, and, and I should have uh, mentioned that uh, Mr. Augusto is, is here to answer any questions. It, this is a new contract, um, so I believe it would also then be a new provider. Okay, it says existing vendor. Sorry, I missed that, but maybe Mr. Augusto can confirm. Yeah, I need to confirm the vendor, um, but what I can say is, uh, so we are using the MICTA and the unit price, uh, there is no difference in unit price between uh, the prior the current contract run and this new contract. So uh, there is no increase in unit cost. And, and just a big, the, I don't know if I un understood the question, but the contract award vendor is Lumen Technologies Group? That's right, it's Lumen. So existing vendor, new contract vehicle, and no change in unit price. Correct, no change in unit price. Beautiful, thank you. Mr. Hardlove, if you could proceed with the next contract. Sure, uh, GDA-304-21 Mass Notification Emergency Communication System. And, and I hopefully we got this one right. This was an assignment uh, change in vendor name only. And this one, um, it, it, the contract uh, was changed from uh, Intrado Inter Interactive Services to Power Schools Group LLC. Are there any questions? I just got, and this is this is because of an acquisition, so that is the the, the reason for this change. Right. Mr. Young, I, Mr. Augusto. I'm sorry. Mr. Young, I had a question um, that Mr. Augusto answered um, partially, but I assume since it's um, an acquisition, the functionality is the same. Correct. Yeah, it's the same same software, it's just uh, under a different owner um, and it'll eventually be rebranded, but same functionality. OK, any idea whether um, the new owner plans to increase that functionality? The reason I ask is because we hear from families quite frequently about the delay in receiving notifications um, when there is an incident. And I'm curious as to whether 
this would give us the function out the technical functionality or whether that's more of a procedural legal issue um, to increase the the responsiveness or the the speed at which we're able to communicate to families when when something happens at a school yeah so Ms. Hen, uh, we do meet with the uh, vendor because power school is a vendor that we use for other products within bcps we do meet with uh, the vendor to discuss their product pipeline um, I think this is a good opportunity if, if I have, and if you can provide just um, what the requirement would be, we could bring that up to PowerSchool at our next meeting, um, specifically around, because uh, I wasn't sure what the requirement was around the concern or the issues that parents were bringing up with responsiveness. Um, so a little bit more specificity would be nice. Sure, and it, and it's let, I have a feeling it's less on the technical um, capabilities mm -hmm. and more around our internal processes. And maybe as we look at those, um, that that's something that would be part of, of that discussion and more relevant, just in terms of the speed at which they receive notification when there is an incident in a school. That's all. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hartlove, if you could present our next contract. Yes, NGO-401-24 before and after care services pre-qualification of providers. Um, this is a, a new contract. Um, the costs uh, may co be covered either through concentration of poverty uh, grant funds or by direct parent payment. Uh, the maximum contract spending authority is $294,000. Are there any questions? I have one, Mr. Young. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, and it has to do with the funding source. Um, so thank you, Mr. Hartler, for, for providing that information um, that, that this is covered through either the concentration of poverty grant funds or by direct parent payment. Is that determination made on a school um, by school basis, depending on whether it's a community school and if, if so, all students that are receiving before and after care, um, their services would be covered through those grants? Or how is that determined? So it looks like Ms. Webster is gonna jump in here. Yes, it is made, uh, the decision as to whether to use community school funds for this is made on a school by school basis. Um, the schools will take into account um, how many how much money they have available for this specific service they may choose to offer a few weeks during the summer for um, a group of students um, it is they've used it currently on a fairly limited basis like maybe one school has used it thus far and I believe it was a couple of days during an event. Mm, okay. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Uh, that that makes sense because they, um, with the the spending authority, two hundred ninety four thousand, um, suggests limited use, right? Yes, so, ma'am. Okay. Um, but it is available to community schools to use if they have funds to do that. So is there? There possibility that this could come back to the board to increase that spending authority if more schools elect to use this and to to pay for that with their community yes, schools. Yes, if if more elect to do that, that is a possibility that it would come back for additional spending authority. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mr. Young, can you hear me? This is Rod McMillian. Yes, sir. We can hear you. I just want to let you know that my screen's frozen, but I can hear the dialogue and, and now that I can speak in. But my screen's frozen. I don't want to turn it off and try to reboot it because I'm afraid it won't come back. So I'll stay on it until the this way until the end. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hartlove. I believe Mr. Dixit, uh, you're presenting our next contract. Good evening. Uh, my name is Pete Dixit. I'm executive director for facilities management and strategic planning. The next contract is JBO 
22-20. This is for domestic water heater preventive maintenance, repairs and installation. Uh, this will provide for all the repair and installation of domestic water heaters. It is the request is for adding $845,000 to this contract. This is the third year of a five year contract and all the funds that are in here are from operating budget. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mr. Dixon, if you could give us our next contract, please. The next contract is GTA-309-24 for Environmental Hazard Abatement Services. The term is eight months and the request is for $100,000. <clears> the services include containment, cleanup and disposal of hazardous substances. Most of the time is petroleum oil, sludge oil, reuse oil, oil mixed with waste and crude oil. Uh, the funds that are going to be used are from operating budget. Thank you. Are there any questions? I just have one quick one, Mr. Young. Please proceed. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Dixit. Good evening. Um, so this is does not include asbestos abatement service. Is that correct? It would be funded usually in association with a capital project. So to to my knowledge, this is not for asbestos abatement. This is for uh, and other environmental issues. Uh, anything that is done for capital project, it is a separate contract for capital funds. Miss Webster is shaking her head, so I believe I'm correct. OK, that that clarifies that for me then. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next Thank contract you. is GDA. I'm sorry, I, I didn't get the green signal from Mr. Young. Oh no, go right ahead. Thank you, okay. sir. The next contract is GDA 307-24 for laboratory stall installation and repair. The term of the contract is for five year, and this will provide for laboratory stall installation, new and or repair services. The maximum spending authority is $300,000 and this is a five year contract. The funds will be used from operating budget. Are there any questions from committee members? I have one, Mr. Young. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Dixit, we know we have lavatories that have to remain closed in our schools um, due to vandalism, due to um, student misconduct, and some vendors have been in the news recently talking about improvements to um, the facilities themselves in order to um, protect against that, against that or mitigate against um, those types of acts. Is this something where we have an opportunity to discuss with this vendor or, or, or another um, while we're on the subject to ensure that our students have access to the lavatories throughout the day that they need while also um, preserving our facilities from those damages. So we can definitely uh, have a conversation with the vendor. To my knowledge, we have not gone into that area because each instance is different. You know, uh, it could be aging, it could be rusting, it could be school discipline issue, but our focus with this contract is to repair it or replace it. OK, and and I'm coming at it from the angle of cost containment, right? Because we we want to ensure access um, to students, but at the same time. Um, minimize those costs with with having to replace and repair on such a, a frequent basis. Um, it's not happening. Schools are closing um, lavatories for that reason um, to protect them. And I'm just curious as to whether there are any solutions if the vendors coming in saying, hey, we have this less costly option. Um, given the the misconduct we're seeing, and I'm specifically concerned about that something goes viral on TikTok and you have students 
vandalizing the restrooms and now they're closed to all students because of the misconduct of a few. So as we have these conversations with vendors, if that's something that could be considered. Oh, we'll definitely have that conversation and not only vendors. We talk with the school administration also, but our major focus, like I indicated, is for getting the laboratory back in <clears throat> operation. And most of the time what we see is just aging uh, of the laboratory, rusting, uh, wear and tear. <clears throat> but if we get into any situation that you are mentioning, we definitely bring it to the attention of school administration. Thank you. Whether through materials or I'm I'm throwing out just, you know, ideas. The, these are the experts here and you're the expert. So as you would hope that this would there would be innovations that schools could um, turn to to be able to ensure access is available um, and mitigating those those costs from damages, whether or due to aging. I mean, that'd be great if it would we could come up yep. with some innovative solutions here to ensure students have access. Thank your, you. Your, your point is well taken and, and we appreciate uh, your ideas. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. The next contract is Mr. Young. Is it good for me to go nope. for? OK, go right um, ahead. The next contract is NTA-505-24 is for mechanical pump repairs. And uh, this is a contract for five years, I believe. Uh, that's correct. And the amount we are requesting is $750,000. Uh, and this is for the pump repairs which that pertain mostly to the HVAC system. Are there any committee member questions? Please proceed with our next contract, Mr. Dixit. Uh, the next contract is J. I want to I want to make sure I'm not in the right place. Uh, the next contract is NGO-404-24, and that's roof repair services and associated material. It's a five-year contract and the maximum spending authority is four million dollar. Uh, I just want to make it clear that this is for repairs of roof and not for the capital project. Uh, our fiscal year spending uh, on an annual basis is around eight hundred thousand dollars. And there are four vendors that have this contract or that will have this contract after you approve. Are there any questions? Please proceed with our next contract. The next contract is JLE-618-20. This is for boiler, general installation, repair, inspection, and preventive maintenance services. The request is for increasing the maximum contract spending authority by one million four hundred and eleven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, some of this is due to the grant funds that are being used. And the total amount will be six million six hundred and sixty one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. The grant fund that we are talking about is ESSER funds. Uh, and there are four vendors for this contract. Are there any questions? Mr. Dixit, if you could give our, us our next contract. The next contract is CWA-106-24. This is a five year contract for heating, ventilation and air conditioning repair, installation, preventive maintenance and inspection services. Uh, the total cost for that is $12 million over a period of five years. This is mainly uh, from the 98% of these expenses are from operating funds with some a uh, couple of percent from capital uh, because a lot of these uh, the capital projects are individually bid. 
are there, there any are, questions? There are about oh, I'm sorry. eight, seven vendors for this contract. My apologies. I'm sorry. OK, are there any questions on this contract? Mr. Dickford, if you could give us our next contract, please. The next contract is NTA-501-24. This is for installation of secure vestibule for Riverview Elementary School. The, uh, the total contract is uh, $248,888, and there's a contingency added to that, which is $24,289. So the total is $267,000. 177 95% of the funds are from grant and there's about 5% uh, that we are covering by the capital funds. Are there any questions? If you could give us our next contract, Mr. Dixit. The next contract is JBO-711-23 for Hereford High School boiler replacement. And I'd like to give you a little bit of background on this contract. The contract was approved by the board uh, on, in the meeting of February 14th, 2023. Uh, there is additional work that has been identified, which has to do with the fuel pumps. And we are requesting uh, additional of uh, $200,000 to be able to take care of those fuel pumps. It was initially considered that fuel pumps do not need replacement, but once we started the boiler, uh, we found out that uh, those fuel pumps are not working. So this is an added work and we are adding this and requesting your approval for this additional authority. Are there any questions? I have one, Mr. Young. Go ahead, Ms. Hinn. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dixit, do we know the expected life expectancy of the and what the age of these are that we are replacing? So this system is uh, the existing fuel oil system is approximately 30 years old. So th this fuel pump, as a matter of fact, if I recall correctly, uh, was an ad alternate that we did not accept because we thought that the fuel pump could be functioning all right and we do not want it to spend that money. But later on, we found after the boilers were tested that the fuel pumps do need replacement. They are not functioning well with the new boilers. So the price was already there as part of the bid. Uh, so we are taking advantage of that. So they they weren't functional with the the other equipment, the new equipment. It's not that they were not functional with the prior boilers. Well, like I indicated, the old any old equipment, it could be functioning today and it may not be functioning tomorrow. So at the time when we replaced the boiler, the old boilers, they were functioning. With the new boilers, when we tested the new boilers, they were not functioning. So a decision was made to replace the fuel. And do we know the um, expected? What is the life expectancy of the whole system, the system itself? So most of these systems have a life expectancy of 15 to 20 years, but some of them are as old as 40 years and still functioning. So we try to uh, to, to utilize the equipment as long as we can. We try to save as much money as we can. Um, and in doing so, in a lot of other cases, even the old fuel pumps perhaps did work. Uh, so uh, how many additional pieces of equipment which are part of distribution system or other system do work and do not, it varies from system to system. So this is simple. I appreciate that and I appreciate um, the efforts that go yeah. into trying to um, maintain this equipment and, and get the maximum life um, 
out of it while preserving those those parts that are still functional. So it's certainly understandable. Thank you for the explanation. And thank you for your welcome. questions. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I think that marks the end of my contracts. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. There being no further questions, we will proceed to closing the meeting. I'm going to ask that we remove contracts five and six. As a result, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through four and seven through 16 be moved to the full board for approval. So I'll make that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. McMillan. That's fine. Okay. Do you want to second that, Mr. McMillan? Yes, please. So we have a motion moved by Ms. Hinn, seconded by Mr. McMillan. The question is on the recommended approval of contracts one through four and seven through 16 for board action. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Faya, please call the roll. Thank you. Um, Ms. Harvey, absent. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Saya. The motion passes. Contracts one through four and seven through 16 will be moved forward to the board. Contracts five and six will be moved to the board without a recommendation from the committee. The last item on Mr. the agenda is announcement. Point of order, Mr. Yes, Young. Okay. Um, I would like yes. to move that contract six and seven be moved to the full board with recommendation. You would like to recommend. Are you talking about already five taken and six or eight. six and seven? I'm, I'm sorry, I cut in, but I do. We were, talk we're talking about five and six, right? I just want to make sure we're. I'm clear. sorry. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Five and six. Okay, good. Two I'm were, sorry. Did we, we did not process um, a vote to move them without a recommendation. Can I would like to move that we forward them to the board with recommendation. You want to have a vote on contracts five and six to move them forward. Correct. To the board. If, we can we can do a motion to move those forward. But based upon how the committee rules are structured, I will be recusing myself from those and we will not have a majority. I believe that the majority of three is is two to. We, we need to vote to process yeah. that. Either the majority either needs to be processed. The majority is based upon the number of members on the committee, not the number present at the meeting. So the majority will be three based upon the committee size of four. Okay, and you're recute and you need to recuse yourself from those two. Yes. Okay. I'll with I'll withdraw my motion. Thank you. The last item on the agenda is announcement. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, January eighth, two thousand twenty four at five PM. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you Thank very you. much.